Hi guys, welcome to the channel. This is Yvonne from Ginger Chick Rehab. Thank you for hopping on and checking out what we are up to. So in today's video, I am tag teaming with my husband, Chris, and we are doing a furniture piece. So we're going to be making over this outdated, beautiful, absolutely beautiful, stunning dresser. But unfortunately, that shell is what makes it look outdated. I love the dental work at the top, but the shell has to go. And as we take a closer look at it, you can see that it had some problems. Something, something spilled there. And then the top of it is a veneer board wood piece. So not an item that you can really sand very easily to leave it natural wood. But the $45 price tag, I still think that there's room there for profit. We're going to start off right from the get-go by cleaning this piece. When you've been sitting around our workshop for even a week, you probably have some sanding dust on you. Then we need to make sure that anything else that's, whatever that spill was, mystery spill, that ate through the finish <laughs> is getting wiped off before doing any other prep on this. So it's just some Dawn dish soap and some hot water. So I have to see how much that spill has caused problems. We know that it's raised the grain on that veneer board, which is just a very thin piece of wood that if you try to sand too far, you'll go into the press board that's underneath it. So, but, but as you can see, we've got some water damage. We got that black going on and some raised grain. So we want to make sure that it's nice and smooth. So just a 220 sandpaper. You don't want to go aggressive at veneer board with anything lower than that if you don't have to. And then not only do we just need to scuff sand to get something for the paint to grab onto. Same situation here on the side, whatever the liquid was. I'm assuming it was a liquid. Um, you don't know. So whatever that was did the same thing. It raised the grain, it caused unevenness. So not only do you need to scuff sand and make sure that that shiny is off so your paint has something to grab onto, you also need to smooth out that area. And then now he needs to go back in and do that rounded trim work. So just some 220 sandpaper, just to scuff sand it. That seems to be the only thing that does not have veneer board on, on this dresser. It's so sad. It would be nice to always get to work with a solid piece of wood. But you find out when you start flipping furniture that that is almost a rare, rarity nowadays, not to have veneer board on a piece. Before sanding the door fronts, we need to deal with the outdated shell on that one drawer. So just some Durham water putty. And if you've not used Durham water putty, it's a wood filler, but it just comes in powdered form. That way you can just mix up the quantity you needed at the time. And then unlike other putties, when you open and close it, sometimes it oxidizes and it starts hardening before you want it. Durham water putty does not. So just mix it, a little bit of water in with it to the consistency that is workable for you. And then sometimes when you're working on a piece and you're cleaning it off and you're sanding it and you're prepping it and you're doing that whole thing you're like oh hey I didn't notice this <laughs> where a dog had chewed or something had chewed on the corner so why he has that Durham water putty mixed up to fill in that shell feature he's going to go ahead and fix those teeth bites on the bottom of this dresser. So now that shell was a pretty big hole. So he filled it up and then he walked away and let this sit overnight to completely dry before moving on to sand it. Now the Durham water putty does dry rock hard. So starting off with some 80 grit to work that um, what he raised. You always want to raise it up, not try to leave it even with a piece of the wood because when it dries, it's going to shrink a little bit. So you ra rather have a little bit more than not enough. Since we're going to be spraying this piece, I need to protect those drawers. There's nothing wrong with the drawers. There's no need to paint over them. So a little bit of prep work to seal them off from getting any paint in. So I just we just have a roll of clear trash bags and some two inch masking tape. And I'll just try to cover up and make sure that I don't have any holes to the best of my ability.
for this black paint and that sprayer, the Truco 360 handled sprayer, if you prepped and you clean properly, a lot of times one coat will be enough and it is beautiful. So now I'm just going to go back in and seal it in with some polycrylic because the black is our finished color. I know you're all wondering when that decoupage paper is going to come into play, but Chris is finishing up his part a little bit in just a little bit here. So he's going to go ahead after removing the plastic, he's going to take some fine grit seal wool and sound, sand everything that's already black and then seal that black paint in with some antiquing wax. That's going to be an extra top coat finish coat and it's also going to richen up that black paint. Now it's that point of the tag I'm in now. Now I'm dealing with, nope, we didn't paint those uh, black. So first I need to deal with that Durham water putty. He got it nice and smooth, but the prosody is different. It's really poor. So if you go to paint it, what's gonna happen is you're still going to see that outline because of how porous that it filler is. So I'm just going to spray it in with some of the shellac spray a couple coats and that will seal it in and so when I go to paint it it will paint evenly and then since I want to put white decoupage paper on these we did not want to paint those four top dresser drawers or actually it's three because the one looks like it's double um, black because then it would have darkened up that white paper. So what I'm doing, yep, I have to do two coats of white paint to cover it up so that white paper will stay nice crisp white. So you know you're a creature of habit when your husband doesn't even ask you if you envisioned the hardware to be a different color other than black. And so my bad, I did not tell him that he didn't really need to spray paint the hardware ever after cleaning it. But you know, we'll see how it looks on bl black on black I kind of had envisioned some brass but we'll see what it looks like because yeah then again I will claim I didn't say a word and you know we think after this long of marriage that they can read our minds but really you do have to say something oh I'm getting the other drawers cleaned up <laughs> while the other drawers are drying there's always something to do so I'm going to go ahead and get the drawers all wiped up get them all nice and cleaned I'm going to put that hardware. I don't think the black looks too bad black on black. I wasn't too sure what it would look on the paper, but you know, sometimes it's a process. And if you don't thoroughly love it, you can change it out, right? That's, that's what we did. So, and then I realized, oh, I was putting them upside down. So let's flip them back over. Tricky little guys here. I still think I put them upside down and ended up having to go back through anyway and change them all back over. But that's later on in the video. So now I'm going to go ahead, even though I've got those drawers cleaned out, they still, they're really dry. They just need a drink. So some of this Howard's wax, the citrus wax, will freshen that right up. It'll give it a nice, clean smell and give that dry wood just a nice, rich coat, riching them up. Now after my two coats of paint, my white is dry. So I'm just taking some 220 sandpaper. I just want to make sure, I think I got it nice and smooth, but I just want to make sure just smoothing out that paint and then I'll dust it off and then now we can get to that beautiful decoupage paper. Oh, here it is. Isn't it beautiful? That white background, those beautiful black flowers, just nice and soft. Now don't worry about the wood that's around the drawers right now. We'll deal with that later, but I just needed to make sure that this double check that my 20 by 30 sheet of 18 pound decoupage paper fit these drawers. And yes, I'm gonna be able to use one piece on all four drawers, it just fits. So to adhere it to the drawer, all I'm using is some polycrylic. You can use Mod Podge also or any kind of other company's medium. I just, for furniture, I am just a go-to matte polycrylic girl. So yes, yeah, see, I'm just going to go ahead and line it up. You can take the drawers out if you want. Uh, my 
pattern. I like it because it's it's a little bit on the random side, but I still want my shading to kind of, you know, come in line. So that's why I put my drawers in so I could see what I was doing. So this was a little bit awkward at first. You know, you got to get it glued down and hold off that long piece of paper. But, eh, you know, it, it all ends up working out just very gingerly. Once that paper's wet, it 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 can tear so you don't want to go too crazy on pulling on it and then I just ever so slightly with my fingers try to work some of the wrinkles out but I do switch over to a piece of balled up saran wrap that really kind of helps the pressure so that you don't accidentally um, rip your paper. Now that I have my paper on all four drawers, I'm going back in with some parchment paper and a nose steam iron. And what this is going to help me do is work any more of those wrinkles out. It's just a personal, you can leave them. You can try to work out a little bit more, but it is, you know, it's paper. It's the perfectly imperfect of a DIY. But yes, I want to work out just a little bit more before trimming off any of the excess paper. And actually the iron also helps dry the polycrylic kind of speeds up that process because sometimes I get a little impatient. But to cut off that excess paper, all I'm doing is taking a piece of sandpaper, 220, whatever you have laying around, and then just so ever gingerly just running it across that sharp edge and that'll cut that paper nice and flush. And I wasn't sure if I was going to leave the outer sides of these wood, but I think it distracts from the paper. So before moving on to paint those edges black, I'm going to get this paper sealed in with some polycrylic. That way I'm going to be free handing that black around there, not messing with any tape. So I want to make sure that that paper is sealed in if I need to wipe anything off. So a couple coats of polycrylic to get that sealed in. Because I do really like the look of black, white, and that brown of the wood, but I didn't want it to take away from this paper. So yes, I'm just going to go ever so gingerly um, with a wet wipe in hand, just in case, and try to cover up this trim. with. It's the same black that the rest of the body and the drawers have already been painted. And then after that black paint is dry, I do need to seal that black paint in. I'll give the decoupage paper another coat of polycrylic. No worries there because I need to treat that black paint just like Chris treated the other black paint and sand it with some steel wool a little bit and do some antiquing wax. And if the antiquing wax gets on, you know, the sides of that white a little bit, I think it'll just bring in that brown that I was looking for. Now I'm going to go ahead and test out that black hardware to see if I like it or not. And what I'm doing here is I'm taking an X-Acto knife, finding those pre-drilled holes so that I don't necessarily accidentally rip that paper. Even though it's sealed in with like four coats of polycrylic, I just like to be safe. So doing any DIY, it's all about personal preference, doing something until you love it. And yeah, I didn't really think these black hardware did anything for the decoupage paper. If anything, it distracted from the decoupage paper. So yep, I'm going to go ahead and paint these brass.
So thank you so much for watching today's video. And what did you think? I absolutely love that black and white decoupage paper. I just cannot get enough of decoupage paper. And yes, yeah, sometimes you put your hardware on and you think, oh, I like it, but I didn't love it. So as I always say, do something until you love it. And I absolutely love that now the black hardware is not distracting from that beautiful floral and that brass is now playing off. So give me a quick comment down below. Have I inspired you in any way to look at secondhand finds in a new way? And as always, if you're part of our YouTube family, thank you so much. And if you are new and you're checking out our content for the first time and you liked what you saw, please hit that subscription button along with the notification bell so you know we uploaded a new video. And we will see you next time, guys, and you can see what we're up to. Bye!